just as we were coming back from the bar last night, we had to stipulate what we wanted for breakfast and uh, what time as well. So I went for another pork tocino and bang on time. Um, I was just talking at the window here, as you can see, um, the shutters are a nice feature. I thought they opened outwards, like the one in the bathroom, but it didn't, and I ended up basically pulling, well, pushing one off. <laughs> so I was hanging at the window, holding onto this shutter. Um, as you can see, they slide. Um, but as I was sorting that out, I saw the lady deliver the food. So, really impressed. I thought we'd have to go and collect it. Um, so now, time to eat our breakfast. Well, open a bit aggressively. Oh my god. That seemed better than the last one. No, it's good enough. Should I try some? Yeah. A little part of me died when you said yes. What did you ask then? <laughs> <laughs> That's okay, have some. Mm. It's lovely, isn't it? Mm. So guys, I'm sure that there are many different ways to cook tocino. So if you can tell me the recipe that you like, then I can make it at home because I really, really like this. The weather doesn't seem too great today. So um, it, it'd be pointless doing one of the tours in El Nido because I think it will detract from the beauty of the landscapes. So I think what we're gonna do is head down into town, have a look at the beach just to get familiar with where it is, how long it takes, what's around the area. So what do you guys reckon to this bandana then, eh? I think it's pretty cool. Um, it saves having to do my hair every day. And uh, if it does get a bit too long later in the holiday, then at least I can just cover it over. Oh, and the showers just started again. Yeah, I quite like it. I think it suits me. And uh, it might be something that you'll see a lot of over this vlog, <laughs> the series of vlogs. About three or four times the power went out, which meant the air con went off and the fan went off. So as you can imagine, I mean, in in the river house in uh, Quran, when the power cut out the one night, it went warm very quickly, and I was worried that we're going to have the same scenario here. But actually, I was getting a little chilly, so having that power cut actually did me a favour. the Mangroves Eco Park. It looks like they're actually going to start opening like a restaurant area here and accommodation and this is an absolutely stunning view from your room. This is sort of like the things you see in movies. And here we are now, in one of them. We found about this place through uh, some other travel blogger who recommended it. it. Has something to do if the weather's not too great. The weather's not awful, but we've got only half a day left, so I figured we'd come here anyway. I sort of learned that it's really important for mangroves to be here because, as you can see, they're so spindly everywhere. They act as like a filter for the rivers and the seas, so it stops all the crap venturing outwards. Obviously it's not uh, foolproof but it's, uh, it's a pretty good system.
So this marks the end of the mangrove tour, you can call it a tour. Um, it's basically sort of one route in, one route out. And there was another route that didn't really have much of a floor, it was just basically bamboo, which Rachel doesn't want to do, but I might give it a go. And this is where it gets interesting. Not even a handrail here. <laughs> I've decided I value my life and my camera far more, so I've decided to turn back because the hand if there was a handrail I probably would have carried on, but there's no handrail and the uh, bamboo seems to be a little more on the rolly side, so I don't want to kill myself. Ooh, this bamboo bit isn't exactly very strong either. Check this out. This is the handrail. <laughs> Doesn't fill you much of confidence, does it? Well hopefully you guys have enjoyed this and I recommend that if you ever come to El Nido that you stop by. Apparently not a lot of people know about this place so it's definitely worth a visit even if you are local. So we're supposed to be finding the zip lines. I think we've gone a bit further past than we're, we're, where we should have been. And that kid behind us there has been sent on a mission by, I assume his mother, to guide us a little further back down the hill uh, to the zip line. But honestly, we're actually going further down the hill. I feel like there's gonna be less altitude to get a good line. The more I get on this walk, the less confidence I have that we're in the right place. Kid's got loads of energy. He's starting around here like Indiana Jones. And we're like <laughs> Jabba the Hutt. <laughs> Speaking of which, it's May the 4th today. So may the 4th be with you, all you Star Wars fans out there. I'm hoping. This trek is worth the time and the money. Having, God, let me stop a minute. Having time to sweep over the sea will be quite nice and refreshing. We've made it to the top. Oh, I made it to the top. Rachel's lagging behind somewhere. Oh, that zip lining, Jesus. Yeah, when you're going over the edge, especially in that position, all you just see is the drop, and I know I'm not gonna drop down, so it isn't as scary, but the thought of just seeing how high you are, and the only way is down, isn't it? It's just like, oh my God. It isn't actually really that high, but it just feels really high when you're up there, especially when, like, when you're facing down and you've got nothing but the sea and the drop in front of you gets your heart going and that walk to there in the first place oh my god yeah Rachel went lightheaded it was so so tough and that it wasn't even a sunny day just imagine if it was a sunny day oh 
my wife. <laughs> the woman of many words. <laughs> yeah, I don't want any food just yet. I'm too hot for that. So I want to order a Coke Zero and another Red Horse beer. I think what we could do now is a nice bit of aircon outside. I know this is cold, but I really wish it was like even colder, like on the verge of frozen. <laughs> so it's happy hour here at the Maui Meg Meg, I think I say you say it, <laughs> beach bar. Um, we get three cocktails for 350 peso. I'm gonna opt for a white Russian. We're gonna. I was. I was happy to have three each, but Rachel only wants. Well, doesn't want three to herself, so we're gonna share the half. So we've ordered a Jimli, not a Gimli. <laughs> not a, no Gimli. Jimli, white Russian, and classic dagger. Yes, please. Thank you, Korea. It's five pound for three cocktails. <laughs> So it's cooled down enough now that I don't think we're going to go in the sea but we are hungry so we're going to probably go and grab ourselves a sarni or a salad and then maybe head back to the hotel. It's a little bit smoky right here. I guess the Sorry, it's just because of the uh, the grill, so the smoke. So. Oh, it's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there you go. So it's the grill that's uh, causing the smokiness around here. That red horse. I've had three of those, and I've had uh, half a daiquiri and a white Russian as well. So I think I'm done. I'm not too bad. I could drink obviously a lot more but I don't want to end up with a hangover from hell. I will thank myself in the long run. As far as I know, the only plan today was to uh, go up the canopy. If it's going to be thundering and lightning and raining, it's probably going to be a really stupid idea to do that. It's a bit too small for my head. So we've reached the top of the canopy. We are six to seven meters above sea level. 